on Twitter, there was this one tweet mm-hmm. that I it's just it rings in my head every day now. Yeah, it's, it's like it's stuck f- in your brain. Yeah, the funniest nigga you know is not even joking. Yep. And that's dead serious on Vince Staples. Every single thing Vince Staples says in his interviews, he's dead serious. He's dead ass. He's dead serious. People are dying around him because he has um his intonation of his voice is like mm-hmm. a wisecracker yep. type of voice. And even though what he's saying is true, um, it's still funny just because of his delivery. But when you listen to his music, he doesn't deliver his raps in that wisecrack type of way. Yep. Good afternoon, beautiful people. This is another episode of Album Mode. We review a new album every single week. We look at the lyrics, the production, the overall aesthetic of the album, and how that album fits into the context of that artist's career. For all my people watching on YouTube, thank you for joining us on our way to 5,000. Leave us a comment, like this video, and of course, make sure you're subscribed. My name is Adriel Smiley, a.k.a. AdrielSmiley.com, a.k.a. Adriel Smiley Official, a.k.a. The Godfather, and we're here with His Royal Highness, a.k.a. The Bunny, King Grant. What's happening, people? We're back. This time, it's with us and Vince Staples, one of the people that I've been lionizing for the past two or three years. Dropped a new album called Dark Times. Vince Staples, I want to say his past two albums, to me, to me, these have been masterpiece albums, okay? Been able to talk about the lifestyle of growing up uh, in in Long Beach, I believe, mm-hmm. as Crip, as a Crip or Crip affiliated, and being able to go and ponder back on those times, what it was like, type of situations you were in, even the party times. Sometimes yep. it's party times. Yep. Uh, so he's been he's been digging in the the memory, been digging deep, trying to recall all of those events, and now we have dark times. Uh, from the looks of it, mm-hmm. it's going to be more recollections of the past. But I've been excited for this for basically since he announced, basically since the previous album came out, mm-hmm. which is Ramona Park. Uh, Bro- broke my heart. Broke my heart. I've been looking forward to any new Vince Staples music because he's on a heater. He he is on a heater. I would say the last three projects since 2021 when he put out self titled. That from, was good too. Yeah, yeah. From self titled to Ramona Park, broke my heart to to dark times. I, I would say this is like... Even FM. FM was good too, but I, I, I think FM is, is kind of the breaking point for me where it's like, this is where his career shifted. Mm-hmm. I think true. FM fits in more with what he did before, like Big Fish and Prima Donna. Yeah. I think that was like a different era of Vince. And listening to this, I, I went back and listened to a lot of old Vince Staples. Because Vince is one of those artists who I've happened to see in concert three or four times just because he keeps opening for people that, that I, I want to see. Mm-hmm. And... It's a different kind of rapping that almost doesn't exist in his raps anymore at all. And I want to mention that up top is that, like, almost screamy Vince Staples that's a little bit strained, but is him kind of with, a, like, a higher energy. That's, like, basically not in his repertoire anymore. Big Fish and FM had a lot of that where, again, that was, like, high energy Vince Staples. And I don't know what drugs he's taking. I don't know what changing his life. But he has just mellowed out completely. Yeah. And I think that even though... He's always been a good lyricist. The fact that he just took that, you know, style of rapping out of his repertoire completely, who knew that was what it would take for him to start making masterpieces? Because that's the main thing I, I, I realized from listening to old Vince Staples and new Vince Staples, is if you put all, all the Vince songs you like on shuffle, that's like the, the quick tell of what's old and what's new. A song like North North mm-hmm. wouldn't even exist in this new Vince Staples era. And so to see him make that choice... That's kind of where I started listening to this one. Yeah, and I would to even contrast that with another song that is probably one of his best songs ever is When Sparks Fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is just not a track that he would have released in the past. I think it's like way more introspective, mm-hmm. way more down tempo. Because remember, when he was doing like Big Fish Theory, it was almost electronic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Sophie, rest in peace, mm-hmm. was producing some of his music. Yeah. So it's kind of like almost hyper pop. To a, to a degree. Very much. And now it's a very muted, I would say muted um, version of hip-hop. Very mm-hmm. introspective. So, yeah, there's been a big-time shift. Big time. Yeah. You mentioned When Sparks Fly. That's my favorite Vince Staples song, yeah. song of all time. I was surprised that, like, after all the music he's put out from 2014 mm-hmm. up until now, that 
my favorite song for him would be coming out in 2022. But that's kind of what he's on right now. What's your favorite Vince Staples song? Um, and from all all eras, you can choose from any Vince song. What's your number one? I think it's Wind Sparks Fly 2. And I remember calling that out uh, when we did the podcast. I'm mm-hmm. like, I think this is the best song he's ever made. Yeah. And I think, I still think it is that like that. Because I think that song in particular, Wind Sparks Fly, is basically where you saw him like crystallize as like an artist in this time period mm-hmm. where he is able he's ca- capable of making a song as refined it's it's literally a total double entendre the entire song yeah and for it to not sound like he was trying to jam a you know a square peg into a round hole or he wasn't trying to make sure that it's so deep that we have to refer refer to these super deep things but it still had these uh really you know had a really inter- interesting hook where the vocal sample in the background was actually the hook so mm-hmm. i think that song is basically um like it epitomizes this new era of Vince Staples i think we're going to talk about previous era Vince mm-hmm. Staples then we're talking a little bit um i think i was like even yeah right yeah yeah right or 745 i like a lot i think i would say yeah right is my favorite song from uh, from the past era yeah from the past era where he was again it was more electronic um but yeah for this era it's when sparks fly i think that it kind of solidified itself to me on the first listen basically that this is not just a one-off or, like, a back-to-back thing. Mm-hmm. Because I think when he put out Vince Staples' self-titled, I don't I don't say we were, super, we were like, shook that he could do this, but he had not done that before. Yeah, he was not displaying that he was even going to do that. To yeah, that. And, and even though I was wondering, like, what's happening to him, because I always wonder about his career, because I've always seen him open for people. Yeah. And I was like, when will the time be where he has his own headlining show and he has his own hit songs? Because he has quite the discography for someone who basically has not one hit song ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to see him make that switch of, like, this new version of him is not really catered towards the hits as much, but it's better. Yeah, and it's also it's also a situation where his music is strong. Mm-hmm. I would say that his aesthetic is not. Yeah. But his appearances are literally A1. I don't mm-hmm. think I've... <laughs> I don't think you can ever watch a Vince Staples interview, video, mm-hmm. pot, whatever, anything he appears on as as his person mm-hmm. and not leave it, like, dying of laughter. So he's kind of got a, a two-prong attack. Kind of, mm-hmm. It kind of resembles um, Tyler the Creator in a mm-hmm. way where Tyler, or even just like Odd Future mm-hmm. in, in general, where the personality of the group was almost as important as the actual music that came out. Because mm-hmm. if you think about <laughs> if you think about what odd the odd future tapes really sound like, like if you really go back and listen to them. Insane. Uh it was not let's say it was not as good as the solo work from the artists that were also Any in of it. Them. <laughs> Any of them. <laughs> right? And they kind of ran away with that. But the aesthetic mm-hmm. and the personality of Odd Future was amazing. For Vince Staples, the aesthetic, I feel like, is not really there. He has mm-hmm. not been able to capture the blue mm-hmm. of the cryptness, really, um, are you intrinsically. Saying, are you saying he's not crypt enough? I'm not saying that. <laughs> In fact, I'm very much not saying that. Uh, but I think he's, hasn't been able, he hasn't been able to tie that together very well. Like, if you open mm. the vinyl um, or, yeah, if you get, like, the records, then there's, like, a lot of blue inside of it mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But... He hasn't been able to really make an a, a big aesthetic that like projects out to people, but the mm. music is solid and his person like when he's just out and about and you're doing interviews and stuff, he's amazing. So that's I think that's the reason why he's kind of like that. He's you mentioned Tyler. Tyler I think is a person who I think of a lot of like where he's trying to get to mm-hmm. in terms of having both those things stand side by side because I think Vince is still in the place where his interviews and what he does online is more popular than his music. Me too. I, and I think that the music is better, but I don't feel like he's actually closing that gap. And I asked a lot of people about this project who are just hip-hop fans in general. Like, they are, hip-hop is their home, their main genre. Anything hip-hop comes out, they know about it. And most of the people I asked were hadn't listened to the album one, but either didn't know what came out, or, or they said to me verbatim, I maybe know five in Staples songs, period. 
And so he's in that group of people where hip hop knows who he is. I'm sure people, more people watch his Netflix show than listen to his last album. Yeah. And so he's in that space where everyone knows who he is. Hip hop is well aware of who he is as a personality, as a character. But the music, everyone hasn't jumped in yet. And so that's something that I, I always pay attention to with him because that is such an interesting space to be where everyone knows who you are. Yeah, but not your music. But not listening to your music. But and, they know you as a musician. And they know that you are a musician. And so it's like, <laughs> I find that interesting because that shows me that the interest is not there. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we we hung out on the weekend and my friend asked us both about the show. She, she I know she doesn't listen to Vince Staples. Mm-hmm. She didn't ask us about his music. Yeah, but and, she was talking about the show. And and there was no interest of like, oh, his show was kind of funny. Maybe It's like, I'm cool not listening to him and people are staying on that hill of like, listen, I've been cool not listening to him. I'm staying cool not listening to him. I got I got no interest. Maybe he's in the wrong field. He should be an actor. I think he's in the right field. <laughs> I think right. But but I, I think that I like his approach to his music of almost doubling down on his undergroundness because there's a lot of songs on this project um lyrically that are very much okay, this is like a Vince Staples song. Yep. Not just because of the way he's rapping, but the things he's saying. And he has this great way of including like humor and that like gangster character with the like I'm out that life type of events. Like he mixes them all together in a way where it's like I I don't see 21 Savage making these jokes in his records. Yeah, because Vince Staples is frankly, he's funnier than 21 Savage. Yes. Um, yes. but he is less sinister than 21 Savage. So there mm-hmm. is an element of uh there's an element of humor to his his view on mm-hmm gang gangness and also he kind of looks at it as stupid yeah i think he i i really from, especially from his interviews he see seems to be a person that understands that it's kind of or views or understands mm-hmm. and perceives it as to be ridiculous to be in a gang mm-hmm. like he understands why people are in a gang but he sees like a grander scale and is like, it's actually kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah. He, and he, he says that a lot in his music, too. He's not dying on the hill. And yeah. I, I think that's the part of it where, and it reminds me a lot of Schoolboy Q who does this as well. Is like, listen, I live that life more than a lot of y'all. But I'm not, that's not who I am through and through. And so I think that that's something that is a lot on children's song. Mm-hmm. Because firstly, I love the, the course of saying, don't play with my crib and go play with your kids. Yeah, that's funny. I think I'm going to be saying that for the next 15 <laughs> years at a minimum. Um, but on verse two, he says, don't be calling my phone after eight. I'm at home. Don't be calling my phone after eight. I'm in bed, bitch. And if I'm with a bitch, it's none of your business. Got to keep this shit bliss. Got to keep this shit ignorant. Pray this not what the devil intended. It's money outside. Go and get it. Make a ticket. Up all night with the smokers and the crickets. I've been broke all my life. Had to flip it. All these grown niggas living off women. That ain't no real shit. Mm-hmm. These are are almost quotables he said in his interviews of don't call me after eight. I'm at home. Yeah. All these grown niggas living off women. That ain't no real shit. And I think why I like this song in particular of him putting these messages in there is again, his interviews are watched sometimes more than his listened to more than his songs. And so the message in his interviews of what he says, that's where we're getting what he thinks from. Like his ideas of the gangster lifestyle and what he thinks about that. We're not getting that from his music. Mm -hmm. We're getting that from his interviews and things he's saying online. And so to put that into the music and have those two messages match, I feel like it's about time that we got that because I do think that there is some kind of way that we're viewing him Mm -hmm. and viewing his music as almost two separate people. When it's it's obvious that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think um, his his music prior to this Mm -hmm. album doesn't, it's not funny. Yeah. It's actually extremely serious, which is totally fine. Mm-hmm. But his strength as a person, I think, you know, on Twitter, there's this one tweet mm-hmm. that I it's just it rings in my head every day now. Yeah, it's, it's like it's stuck f- in your brain. Yeah, the funniest nigga you know is not even joking. Yep. And that's dead serious on Vince Staples. Every single thing Vince Staples says in his interviews, he's dead serious. He's dead ass. He's dead serious. People are dying around him because he has um his intonation of his voice is like mm. a wisecracker yep. type of voice. And even though what he's saying is true, um, it's still funny just because of his delivery. But when you listen to his music, he doesn't deliver his raps in that wisecrack type of way. Yep. Right? It's very much reflective and pensive and stuff like that. 
And I think if he actually leaned into that more, I think that would um, add a new dimension to his music that no other gangster rapper actually does at all. Schoolboy Q has a little bit of it. He does have a little bit of it, but I think Vince, his delivery is more fit for that kind yeah. of comedic style. And I, I, why I really want to highlight this is because let's go back again to his old music, FM, Big Fish. Mm -hmm. Like how his music is, is way more calm now and way more direct. Big Fish and FM was like a hyper version of Vince. Mm -hmm. And if you watch this interview, Vince doesn't give us hyper. And so for his music to be so hyper and energetic and his interviews, he's so calm. Yeah. I think that built more the divide of like, here's interview Vince and here's music Vince. Yeah. And I think finally we're, we're it's Netflix Vince, interview Vince, yeah, music the, Vince. They're all the converging finally. Finally, yeah. And I think um here's one thing that I, I do enjoy about his music uh recently is that he has been able to just break down the mental toll. Mm -hmm. That also happens on them on like living in that life, um on government cheese, right? He's like, keep my fade low. I can't let the grays grow. Just another day closer to my demise. Keeping the gang around, at least the ones that stayed down. Love to see, uh, love to see they face smile. Love to see they heads held high. Every day gotta die. Only question is it hell or in the sky? Yeah, okay. And then that's the verse, like the end of the first verse, and the chorus goes. Just don't forget to smile. Don't forget to smile. Know the world. Know the world can weigh you down. Not now, then when. Not this, then how. Don't forget to smile. Don't forget to smile. Don't lose your inner child now. So I think that Vince, especially on Government Cheese, is basically trying. Like he he shows that there is like a nihilism mm -hmm. that exists to this lifestyle, even it, even for him who is, I would say, divorced to an extent from, from it. And he is, at, you know, he's like saying, you know, he, he's happy to at least see other people around him happy, even though that uh, literally uh, every day, every day got to die on the question is hell or the sky, you know? <laughs> like, he's already contemplating his death mm -hmm. at the same time as being like, I'm happy everybody else is happy, though, you know? Like, there's this duality that exists for him that uh, I think is really interesting. And again, some... You know, some rappers do, again, I, I think I've said this before. Mm. Vince Staples, even though he's not like a gangbanger, he's a gangster rapper, though. Yeah. And the way that he, uh, the stuff that he raps about and the frequency at which he raps about it is kind of unlike any other gangster rapper. So I just wanted to point out on Government Cheese, like another example of that where he's kind of like pensive and like there's, again, a nihilism, but also mm. unhappiness that he's trying not to lose. Like he literally says that. So... It's an interesting combination of emotions. Yeah, I think something he's has said in his interviews that I guess is part of growing up in a sense is that lifestyle and what that comes with and how it affects you mentally is one part of his growth. But there's a whole different version of stress just as an adult and entertainer and being someone in the music industry. Yeah, And I think that that's the duality that you see a lot in hip hop of someone is, okay, I'm an entertainer now. These are my problems. These are my issues. But the people that they're around have these street issues. And I think something he's had a lot is these street issues are pretty stupid. And, you know, they're not, they don't kind of compare to the real issues we have over here, which, like, we want to have these mm -hmm. issues over here. So I think he's, he's we got to call that that rapper something of where, like, they're the get you out of the street rapper. <laughs> like, what we, that, that has to be its own subgenre. Maybe we'll start adding people into this. Vince will be the first honoree. Into the get you out the street rapper, yeah. Um, but I, I think we got to start adding people into that lane because that that is almost a lane in a sense of like, I'm telling you what it was like, but don't stay there. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we had to give him some credit. Maybe Kendrick Lamar. We'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. <laughs> um, on Free Man in verse one, yep, one of my favorite songs on here. He says, mm -hmm. "It feels good to be a free man with clenched hands." I used to pray to find a way to make a label advance, but nowadays, 100k. Ain't even getting my glance. Ain't even setting up no meeting till they meet the demands. An undisclosed amount from Netflix? Invest it. I turn the set into a movie set for all of the kids to see who you can be if you believe you're bigger than this. Don't meet no crab in the bucket. Be a crip at the Ritz. This is basically as motivational as mm -hmm. Vince Staples gets. But I, I, I love the motivation. Everyone knows I'm a positive person. Love the motivation. But I'm actually here for the autobiographical part of this. 
of him saying, I used to pray to find a way to make a label advance. Nowadays, 100K ain't even, ain't even getting my glance. Let's go back to the interviews. There was a time when he was talking about wanting to still get to that level of making that money. Mm-hmm. Now that Staples and interviews are like, I'm good. Yeah. The money the is made. Him shouting out the Netflix deal and him investing it and I ain't sending up a mean until they meet my demands. This is him having leverage that he talked about earlier in his career. So congrats to Vince for making it to this spot in your career to have that leverage because this is something I remember him talking about wanting in a sense. And for him to have this song called Free Man and the verse starts with, it feels good to be a free man with clenched hands. Mm-hmm. Free in the sense of not not on these, these horrible contracts, not in, in a 360, but I like the clenched hands part of it because he's not relaxed. I'm a free man, but I'm not relaxed. And I think that is a is a almost his whole entire career lyrically in a sense where I'm out the hood, so I'm free from those things, but I'm still not relaxed. I still have a way to go. I still have a fight to do, so I like that. And then this, this line we haven't talked about enough. Twitter, the internet, you haven't mentioned the line enough. Don't be no crab in the bucket, be a crip at the Ritz. Yeah, that's dope. That's a, a bar. Yeah. That's a bar right there. Yeah, he's uh, definitely... He's definitely, I would say he's even, you know, painting a little bit of a p- picture. I think his idea of even creating more, like, um, more imagery for his music is something that he's really trying to stack on. Mm-hmm. I think even, like, that, that is great imagery, first of all, because I, I think of that and I think of, like, almost like Thug Deficit. <laughs> a grip at the wrist. <laughs> but also, you know, like Snoop. Mm-hmm. For sure, Gangs Delicious. Yeah, Gangs Delicious. Which is see what I'm saying? Yeah. See, the, see the you see the connections. Um. So yeah, I think that the imagery of that is really good. I think that he even you know he's playing with imagery too on Justin, where um this also connects to the interludes where he's um he's I want to say visiting or visiting like this girl at her apartment mm-hmm. and uh he you know she asks him to come up and he's like dope. And then there's like a knock at the door. So here, give me the part where she's. Uh, can I, okay, pull up on La Brea, where the niggas shooting choppers. Ken can barely hear the ambulances over helicopters. She invited me up for a drink. I don't indulge, but the moments with her make me feel. So what's the rush? Started talking about the future and the ever present past. Awkward silences and laughs got me telling. Got me feeling like we in the on the path of something. Right before this woman stole my heart, I see a shadow by the door and hear a knock. Every bl- every bloodshot, <laughs> sorry, eyes bloodshot like she had been seen a ghost or something. I don't know what's what. Reaching my pot, reaching my pocket, get to clutching. She like, hold on, I'm coming. If it get tricky, then I'm bussing. She said, "Baby, meet my little cousin, Justin." So, again, the imagery, you know, reaching to the pocket, you know, the ambulance, the helicopters, right? So definitely painting more of a picture Mm -hmm. of what is happening. Uh, But even the idea of, like, you know, eyes bloodshot, like she's seen a a ghost, reach into my pocket, pocket gets a clutch in. I think that he is, instead of, um, instead of making these vague concepts around gang gang life, which is Mm -hmm. very easy to do. Uh, he's really breaking it down to uh, even just like visiting or like meeting a girl and like this whole story, this whole, um, I don't want to say love story. I want to say entanglement, this entire entanglement that is happening. I like that. He still reaches, he's still reaching for his gun just in case. Right. So I like that. That's still like, no matter what story he tells, that's Mm -hmm. still part of it. Like there is still like a gang, um, like a gang memory or a gang problem or just like you know worry being worried about something that's still part of any story. Like it really just reinforces how entrenched and how pervasive that lifestyle is in every aspect of your life. I think this is is a great way great way to show it because this is something that I have dealt with with some of my friends where I think about that. Like when one of my friends hangs out with someone new, I'm thinking if this woman's gonna rob him. I'm sure there's a whole group of men who don't even think a woman could rob them, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, this is almost an exact example of growing up in a certain place where 
someone else is thinking, oh my goodness, we're about to get down. It's about to be whatever. And the next group of us is like, don't get robbed, you know? <laughs> and I think of a song like Keisha from Dave East, which is one of his first big songs, where that's basically a similar story. That's how the whole idea of the song, this woman takes his chains, his money, he wakes up and is like, you know, where the hell is Keisha? And I think that these are kind of the, the ways that you can illustrate that life that almost feel more relatable because there's the, the, the romance of it, the entanglement, like you said. Mm -hmm. So for most of the song, everyone can relate. And then the parts that are more like you grew up in a certain way, those fans can say, oh, okay, I see you here. And even the ones that didn't grow up that way can listen and understand this is him growing up in that environment and still having those fears. So yeah. I, I like Justin for that reason. And then the outro, I, I can't believe this is not blown up on TikTok right now. Women lie a lot. You put that on the dead homies. Women lie a lot on God. Women lie a lot. Put that on the dead homies. Women lie a lot on God. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a whole section of the algorithm <laughs> that just, this is their Bible. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, this is, I, I, I found y'all. Okay, I got you. I don't, you know, you can have them. No, I, don't, I don't want them. 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 Okay, listen, you were, you were there at Soul Street, like I said before. I'm a girl's girl, okay? Uh -huh. you, know, you, you know the side I'm on. <laughs> yeah, I think that the... How do you feel about the interludes in general? I like them. Like, liar, Liars is one of them, and then there's the outro of, like, the entire project. Why yeah. when the sun come out? Yeah, I, I like Liars a lot. I think that just... These um, interludes, I feel like, do the job that a lot of people think they're doing with interludes. Mm -hmm. Because he's posing this thing that we're all familiar with, with oodles and oodles of nuance yeah and it, it's very similar actually to the to the outro of one sparks fly um of saying he did something wrong mm -hmm. and it said they say he shot someone not saying he did they say he did yeah and so i think that this juxtaposition that he's posing in both of these is actually thought provoking in a way that a lot of interludes try to be but i feel like he actually did a good job here yeah i like the one for liars i think that it's um i've seen that clip before mm -hmm. uh with james baldwin and i can't remember the woman's name at this point in time but i've seen the clip and i thought that it was i was taken aback that he even included i thought it was a great show i think that was one of the first things he put out for this project i know but i was kind of taken aback because it was i i didn't see how it fit in the vince staples oh before universe. you were the project yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like i get it but i don't understand why this mm -hmm. is uh important to you and i think the final outro um why won't the sun come out? Yeah, I would just say, I guess it's, you know, if you're a spiritual person, happy for you. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that connects with you. I'm not really a spiritual person at all. So it was like, you know, it was okay. Um, but I do think that the they are doing um, a good job. The woman's name is Nikki Giovanni. There you go. For, for the Liars inter interlude. And Santa Gold is on the outro. Yeah, so I think that it's, you know, it's cool. I think it does set, uh, I do think it sets a little bit of, more like texture to everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. Do feel like he's um over like he's overdoing it. This is like the third album in a row mm -hmm. that this like voicemail or like spoken word in between. So you don't like, you don't like these in interludes. I just think he's doing it a lot, like a lot though. Like it's predictable. What so, do you mean by uh, a lot? I guess and like it's too much on every album type of deal. It's, like... But there's two or three on every album, so it's like it's just like predictable. It's getting predictable. Okay, I, I guess because I I think there are I think a lot of artists who do interludes they do it every project like I think it's like either you're an interlude artist or mm -hmm. you're not you know like Taylor Swift is not really an interlude artist like how many right. interludes have we talked about her doing so yeah. I feel I think maybe it's just like because Brent Fiennes does it a lot so I think it's maybe either you do it or you don't and yeah. maybe that makes it predictable in a sense but I I do like it because I think he is one of those artists that a lot of his fans are not catching all the lyrics I think he's one of those people. And so having these Easter eggs in there to help round everything out in a sense, yeah. um, I think help because I, I think about it with Don FM, The Weeknd, and I think about Jim Carrey as the narrator throughout that whole thing mm -hmm. is, you know, creating those moments where you're kind of putting a thought in the listener's head leading up to a song or leading up to a theme. I think that it actually is helpful because I, I think the, the average music listener is very passive listen. True. And it's just a matter of, do these drums sound cool to me? And it's, <laughs> that's about it. And so I think if if you kind of tell them without telling them heading into the song, 
think about this real quickly before you listen to this. Mm-hmm. I think that does. I think for us, we, we don't really need that prodding. Yeah. But I think that most listeners do. So I think he's done a good job of that because these past three projects have all been more thought provoking than the first six, the first five. Facts. So I I think that these this is where they need these interludes. I think <laughs> to have an interlude before Big Fish just doesn't. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Same. Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah. How do you feel about the drums? Do the drums sound cool to you? I'm just I'm playing on what you said. Yeah, that's that's basically it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about the production right now with this? I mean, this one is uh again a third. Mm-hmm. I don't. It's not. I guess an unofficial trilogy, mm-hmm. in this muted, low key. I don't know. Those are probably the best two words: muted and low key version mm-hmm. of Vince Staples. How do you feel about the production? I liked it, but I, one thing I have in my notes here is I don't know what a Vince Staples sound is. Mm. And may, maybe I, I think what I thought about with him is, like, maybe that doesn't need to be a demand for everyone. I think listening to people, you know, like the Drakes of the world who have this sound that we know is theirs, yeah. even someone like Future, when someone doesn't have a sound, we kind of make it a demand for them. I think there's plenty of rappers who are amazing and do amazing work who don't necessarily have a sound. I think Vince might be one of those guys because I I thought about Black and Blue, which is basically the first song on the project. And I was like, I like this beat, but this doesn't give Vince Staples to me. (laughs) And I think, who who does this give? Like, when you hear Black and Blue, who does that beat remind you of? Mm, Somebody who would use, almost like Brockhampton, actually. Oh, maybe. That's not not bad. That's not bad. Brockhampton or maybe... I'm trying to think. Maybe I was gonna say not, not, I'm not AG Club. AG Club goes a little harder. No, than this. maybe like J Cole. That sounds like a J Cole. Maybe like Born Center era J Cole. Okay, but I think this is like um, a sound that was popular in rap at one point. Like this, this would have been considered a pop rap sound. Yeah, Born Center was 2013, and I I think that that's what what a lot of this project is like different versions of this pop um, rap sound, mm-hmm. and then. The one that I really want to highlight because my favorite vocalist is on here, Shame on the Devil with Baby Rose. Big shout out to Baby Rose. Um, but you know, that song has interesting production. You know, mm-hmm. we're talking about the sound, like he doesn't really have a sound. That sounds like um that sounds like a Mac DeMarco song. <sighs> it's crazy. You said that I have made a whole list of songs. It sounds like Yeah, it sounds <laughs> like Mac it sounds like that sounds like Mac DeMarco to me. Or even uh Yellow Days. Remember we, Yellow yeah. Days, Shot the Yellow Days. So I said this could have been on this could have been on the last few Vince projects. Mm-hmm. This could have been on Call Me If You Get Lost. This also could have been on Faces by Mac Miller. Yeah. Um, but I like it. I, I I do like it regardless of all the places it could have lived. Like this could have lived on five different albums. Yeah, I think it's good too. I just it was just a, a weird crossover to me personally to be like, oh yeah, this like watery guitar and the super slow drums. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this sounds like Mac DeMarco. <laughs> Did you like that as a single? I that, was yeah. I that, mean, it was okay. He has better. He has way, 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 way better singles. And he, yeah, yeah. I, I think I, it was kind of okay. I thought of it because I think all the singles he's dropped for this, you know, unofficial trilogy, to me, have all been the wrong song as a single, including this one. Yeah. But, but I, I think that he's really an album artist at this point. Where, what is a, excuse me, what is a Vince Staples single? Like, what is that even supposed to look like? What does that look like? Yeah, he kind of picks the wrong songs, though, because I remember when we did Vince Staples, the first one, the self-named one. I think it was Law of Averages was the single. Yeah, when I was like, shouldn't it have been Lil Fade was the single, and then I remember Ramona Park broke my heart. I said, I think Lemonade was the single, though. But I said Lemonade should have been the single. I think it should have been the single. So I think that he's kind of... um, I think Magic was a single for oh my, Purpose of my Heart. Oh, yeah, it was Magic. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm like, Lemonade with Ty Dolla Sign would have been... Yeah. <laughs> would have been pretty... You convinced yourself that it was a single. <laughs> You're like, yep, he, he got it right. Yeah, I'm like, okay, well, this, he, he needs his, um, his A&R. Mm-hmm. He needs to be doing a better job um, because I think he's... He just picks the wrong songs. Like, the songs are good. They exist on the album. Mm-hmm. But the promo, the song to push isn't really the right one. I think even Law of Averages was one of the singles, which was pretty good. But again... Wrong song for me. But it wasn't one of the, you know, one of the single singles to put mm-hmm. out. So I think that's his um, his his problem, right? And I think that on Dark Times, there isn't really a single. I guess 
uh, Etouffee. Etouffee is, is would be, but two of my favorite song on here. That would be the single if I was to choose. Yeah. But I again, I'm I'm maybe I'm moving the goalpost for him in a sense. But what is a Vince Staples single? Because he's an album artist at this point that I guess he can try and get that song that will push in a, in a way. But I, I, I think that he's, you got to listen to the whole album when it comes to Vince Staples. Yeah, just put out the upbeat track. Every yeah. everyone has an, Every album has an upbeat track. Just put the upbeat track out as, uh, as the single. Mm. Give us a little house party. Because these are like, his songs are not like a club song, but mm. it's like you can play it at a house party. In the house party prime. Yeah. yeah that 2012, so, 2016 era. Yeah, so I feel like that is something that he's, that's a misstep for him when it comes to production. I think the song sounds incredible. I, I really like mm-hmm. the synths on that song. Like the drums on it, you know, it's a, it keeps a good pace, probably the fastest pace song mm-hmm. on the entire album. Um, that would have been a good, because I think he's an artist that a group of hip hop is only going to hear his singles or, mm. or his features. Like I, yeah, I, features. I think that's that's kind of the, the spot you got to be in. Is okay if someone's gonna only hear my single, what do I want to put out? Because I think there's that's a different space that he's in where we'll hear the full album, but many of the, of people will only hear the single. I think about his song off um from one part broke my heart with him and Lil Baby. Yeah, I, I showed that to a few Lil Baby fans. I said, Yo, this is your guy. Here's something he's doing. They have no idea that song even exists. <laughs> and I think, like, that's why you do a song like that is for those fans. Yeah. But I think that he's a, his music is almost insulated <laughs> away from people when his actual visage and his character isn't. Yeah. And so I think for him, having the wrong uh, single hurts a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think one last thing I want to add about the production um, that I don't like, mm-hmm. which is very, very few things. Justin. Um, even though I like that song so from the song songwriting perspective, obviously, because I included it. Uh the production on it is kind of really simple. Like really mm-hmm. simple, like bare bone simple. I think there's a that like sy- that synth that goes that like summary synth that goes on in between in the middle, mm-hmm. which is nice. But other than that, it's these really it kind of reminds me of remember those that that set of drums on the Drake album, Thank Me Let Thank Me Later. Um Oh. I'm trying to find fireworks. No, I'm trying to find your heart. I'm trying to find your love. Oh, um, like, find your love. Yeah, the drums on those where it's okay. like low key, those were ass. <laughs> okay, <laughs> low key, those were Kanye. But... Demar hates your drums. On that song, it felt like it felt like Kanye was almost playing a trick on him, mm-hmm. right? And I felt like in Justin, the drums are similar, where it's like. The drums are not very good. Like, it's this slow pace, but it's also, like, very, like, distorted, but not in a good way. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It didn't, it didn't really work. And I felt like it kind of dragged the song when it came to its, like, overall um, enjoyment. Because <laughs> I'm like, the songwriting for it, the rapping for it is really good, but it's just missing that piece, you know? Yeah, I, I, I do think on that song in particular, it is kind of skeletal. But I think overall, in terms of this he's in for this project yeah i like the production i think that none of these songs are produced badly where i'm like this is the beat you chose yeah that's like true. i think he's had good beat selection for a, a few albums now i think that lasts on here but in terms of cohesiveness i wouldn't say this is like one sound no but it, it's one vibe yes it's one vibe and i would say that's a, a plus for aesthetic because mm-hmm. it does feel like you know like august 15th you know, 7 p.m., let's throw this on, have this just, like, chilling, you know, going on in the background. It's definitely a specific vibe that he's going for. Again, he's from Long Beach. Mm-hmm. It's always warm there. Um, so I think that something like this kind of matches his um, his home, like, his home. Yeah, this, so, this is, like, sit-outside music. Yeah, right? So yeah. I think, and he's going for that purposefully. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't feel like he's just missing it. So I think that that works overall for his music, even though there's no grand scale... Mm-hmm. Like we were just talking about the weekend after hours, we're like, this is electronic yes. pop slash R and B and all this type of shit, and it has like this one grandiose aesthetic. This is more of like a a vibe aesthetic. We're trying to establish a vibe, yes, which I think is being accomplished. To be honest, before we talk about what this means for his career, I I think Vince Staples has one of the most interesting and unique careers in hip hop. Me too. We've probably ever seen. I think that his first was the six projects. First five projects. Mm-hmm. Um, 
almost a whole different artist. Yeah. <laughs> and you could really see that attempt to break through, whether it's certain features he did or certain sounds that he tried. I think about something like Senorita, which was one of his most popular songs for so much of his career. Senorita would sound absolutely nuts mm-hmm. <laughs> on, on this project. But he's done some of the most interesting features um, in hip-hop. And I'm going to read you a list of names of people he has songs with. Not his features on his song. Yeah. He is on their song, okay? okay? I'm leaving out the swaps and people that are that are on his songs, but these are people that he's on their song, okay? okay? Rosalia? Rosalia is not on this list. What song are they on? I don't know. I was trying to. Th- I was trying to get. No, I'm not on this. You said he's featured on another person's music. Yes, yes. So I was like, maybe he's featured on Rosalia song. I was like, I was like, that would be big, but no, no. Caliucci, Billie Eilish, Snow Allegra, Gorillas, Tyler the Creator, mm-hmm. Caliucci's, Amine, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Childish Gambino, mm-hmm. Flume, Emotional Oranges, and Rag and Bone Man. It's such an interesting group of names that just came out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Flume makes sense for, like, Big Fish Theory. That yeah, actually makes that sense. Yeah, that era, yeah. Yeah. Kelly Uchis makes sense, too. Like, mm. a lot of a lot of the people actually do make sense, but it's considering the entire scope of his career. And I think, as well, the kind of features he does and his kind of rapping, it's still very chill. Yeah. Like, it's not ludicrous and baby where all of a sudden he's just, <laughs> like, hopping onto the track with energy, like... I'm surprised he doesn't have a Drake feature, just because they're, uh, vi- maybe he just doesn't fuck with Drake. He's, I feel mm. like Vince Staples doesn't fuck with Drake. I also feel like Vince Staples is not the level of a Drake feature. I feel like Drake is very selective in that in that sense of like, he, not many underground artists, underground rappers have a Drake feature. Like, there's no Conway Drake feature. There's no yeah, Benjamin. but Drake is it or sorry, Vince Staples is only musically underground. I feel like I think that that's that's yeah. that's kind of the point. Is like. I think he's one of those people who, like, he's so famous Mm -hmm. that we forget that he's musically underground still. Like, on Spotify, four and a half million listeners Mm -hmm. monthly. So it's like, that that spot is such a unique spot to be in, in hip-hop in particular. One person I always think of, and Vince, this is not who you are. You're above this person I'm about to mention. But someone like Trinidad James. Hip-hop of our age group, we all all know Trinidad James is. As a celebrity, as a name, as a face. Yeah. When's the last time you heard Trinidad James' song? Does he still make music? That and that is my point is like your your celebrity and your face recognition will take you far into people knowing who you are. But I think people listening to your music is almost like a whole different thing um, from that. And so I feel like that's where Vince is kind of really, I guess, lacking in a sense, because everyone I named on this list musically is much more popping than Vince is. Yeah. And there are probably people who know who Vince is, but don't know who these people are. Thanks. And so I, I think about that as like. There's there's a, a space, I think, in black culture where just being famous like Vince is holds so much weight when it's like, that, that doesn't always pay the bills. <laughs> that doesn't always help your career grow. Facts. Give me the list mm. again. Billie me, Eilish. What, what's something to do with Billie Eilish? Okay. Off, off the first project. I forgot the name of it now. That's a very that's a u- very unique com- like uh, combination. Something just I would not predict. Um, but it's Billie Eilish. Kaliuchi, Tyler the Creator, that makes sense to me. Yeah, Gorillas. Gorillas, that makes a lot of sense to me. Amine. That makes more, yes, yeah. Childish Gambino, Flume, yep. Emotional Oranges. That's where we're starting to get a little bit squirrely. And Rag and Bone Man. Who is Rag and Bone Man, respectfully? You know you know that, that song? I want to hear Chris sing it, but I'll sing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're only human after all. That guy. Oh. Yeah, 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 that guy. Oh, right. I'm like... <laughs> Who the fuck is Rag and Bone Man, bro? I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. And Burn within Staples is a Billy Eilish song. Yeah, okay. So yeah, he's his 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 feet, those are like good people to collab with. Like they're cool. Like mm-hmm. the thing is they're cool, but they're not like again, like your Drake or your Taylor Swift. Like even Kendrick again, mm-hmm. we'll never forget Kendrick Lamar mm-hmm. has a feature with Taylor Swift, bro. No, hundred percent. But I, <laughs> but I, I think the group of all these people are all very famous musically. Yes. Maybe not Emotional Oranges. Um, it's probably the least famous out of this group, but I think musically, this group of people is able to, like, make money, tour, do well, headline their own shows in a way that Vince is not. And I think Vince is maybe the most famous artist, uh, hip-hop period, in his position. Yeah. I think musically, he's compared to probably a lot smaller artists than we usually review, but I think his this fame as a figure mm. 
has, it outsizes a lot of people. It outsizes a lot. And of he's people. also been around for a lot longer. A than lot, a lot of people. And that's why I say so unique because usually you would think after all this time, his music would have kind of caught up with his fame because he's been kind of this famous for a long time as mm -hmm. well. So to me, I think this actually helps his career because I think that the, the, the catch-up is not there yet. It's still yeah, fame up here, music here. But I think the longer run he has of making good music, whenever he does catch, it will be a great um, thing for people to go back to. And they w they're more likely to go back to the recent work than the past work. Yeah, that's true. I think that uh, he is kind of in a position now where I don't know if he's ever going to have the explosion. I think that if you're already as famous as you are, you have your own show. He has his own show, bro. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, it's not like he's famous a nobody. He's about to get a Netflix show. Yeah. So, so you're, that's a lot of money too. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. So it's not like he's a nobody. I just think his music just doesn't have the mass appeal that his everything else in his life does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like literally. So I think that uh, I, I'm, at the point now where I don't think the musical part is going to have, like, an explosion. Hmm. Unless um, he decides, I'm just going to start making pop rap songs, which I, I could not imagine him doing. I think he's kind of already doing that, in a sense. I don't think so. Yeah, he's like, the, the, the production is very pop rap-ish on the last three projects. Like it's Not really. I don't think so. You don't think so? Pop, you know what? Pop rap right, right now sounds like Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar. That's... That's a not. I wouldn't call that pop rap for sure. That's definitely a that's the production for that's pop rap though. It's that's, a mustard beat. DJ it's, mustard. That's like a West Coast traditional like late eighties nineties yeah. sound, which was a which was pop at that time, right? At, at that time, but it's also DJ mustard. So oh, it, it, it just being mustard makes it pop rap. <laughs> Am I tripping out here? I when guess. Chris Brown was making songs with DJ mustard, was that not pop music? That's Chris when Brown. When Tyga was making music with him. Those, those guys make pop rap. Ty, Ty the, er, not Tyler the Creator. Um, Ty Dolla Sign. Those guys make pop rap, but I don't think yeah. everything Mustard makes makes it pop Does rap. It sounds the same. sounds the same, though. Like, it sounds, it's in, if I played that mm. and then played, like, whatever, a Tyga song from back then, mm. you'd think it's from the same time period. That's possible. That's right? possible. So I think that um, he he's not, I don't think he's captured that. Because he doesn't, also, he doesn't sing. Mm -hmm. So that's also really important, you know. Somebody, if you're gonna be a pop rapper right now, you need to you need to be able to sing and rap, right? Like, there's very few rappers that it's just like I'm at the pinnacle, just rapping. Yeah, I think, and I think, I think he's also just stuck. I think what I would say is, when it comes to events and you're planning events, is like your goal is to make everyone aware that your event is happening. Mm -hmm. Them deciding to go is up to them, and I think Vince has made everyone aware of who Vince is. Yeah, and everyone has decided not to go to that party. <laughs> And but so they love him. They love him when he shows up at their party, though. Yeah, yeah. But they don't want to go to his. Yeah. And, and I think that to me is like the the masses making that decision together is such a unique place to be because yeah. I I I feel like to me he's the case study for this next group of artists that are more famous to him, most musically and just in general, mm -hmm. but are having almost a bigger version of his problem, the Central Seas, the Ice Spices, mm. where their visage is up here and they're signed to majors, so those stream farms are stream farming. Yeah. But musically, people are not bringing them up in conversations of who they're into. Yeah. And so I, I think Vince, I think Vince is, is the route to go down to me of like making music critically acclaimed, be consistent, and whenever people do double back, they're going to listen to the last three albums and not the last ten. Yeah, that's true. So I, I think he, he's doing the right thing there. Yeah, I think it's good for him overall. Mm -hmm. Just so I just want to be able to put yeah. point that out for him. I think it's good for him overall, but I think he's still in a zone where I don't see him escaping unless he changes up the style. Now the cover. How do you feel about the cover? You know who needs a Drake feature? <laughs> Anyway, the cover. I, I he's do, not getting the. He's not doing the Drake feature, bro. No, I could he, not. Even, seriously, I couldn't imagine no. Drake and Vince Staples on the same. I can't so. imagine it either, but I think he's someone who needs it. Like I think he's an artist who, like, if he had a Drake feature, yeah, his, it would do something for him for real. Yeah, it would. It would be huge for him. Um, the cover. I do like it, even though it is like takes getting used to. I would say mm -hmm. because it's like you can barely see what it says on the cover. That's uh, the point. It's called Dark Times. I, Hello. I, 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 it's, it's not, it's not even more dark. It's more like illegible times than, than, <laughs> than dark times. But, um, I, I do like, I think it will look good on a vinyl. Yeah. But I, I'm going to be real with you. When I play this in my car, I had to make sure my car wasn't like breaking down 
like the 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 dash because I thought that this was just like a black screen. I said, uh, how come I don't see the, the album cover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. said, oh, this is the album cover. Yeah, so, that's the album cover. A little bit of that. So yeah, I think the album cover is cool. Um, I will like to see it what it looks like in the physical form because you can tell like there is like um texture to it. Like you can see some parts of it are like lighter than other parts, mm -hmm. and then the text is like a darker black than the rest of the album art. So I think that I I think in, in person like in physical it actually will look better. I think so too. Than digital. Um so I I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think it looks cool though. I definitely think it looks cool and I think it ties together everything that's happening aesthetically, lyrically, all that good stuff. Um and it also is falling in root with the previous album Ramona Park broke my heart mm -hmm. where I saw it on a black background. Mm -hmm. So I think it. I think it works. I think it sounds good. Yeah, you're you're right. Still, because the last three albums have been basically void of color. Yeah, on the cover, and the two before that were big color. Yeah, <laughs> so he's kind of, he's kind of gone into his shell, and he's like, you know what, fuck, fuck everybody, fuck all the colors, fuck mm -hmm. everything. I'm I'm going home. Um, what do you think about uh, no skips for this? I don't th look at it as a no skips, but I think it can be. Like w we need to find another term for that too. Of like. <laughs> When it's technically a no skips because you yeah. don't have to skip any anything, I think that's what it is. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's like everyone will like every song on this project. Like it's not like Thriller. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like <laughs> Thriller is a real no skips. Yeah, I think no skips doesn't have to mean that everything is dynamite. To me, no skips is more like: is there a song that you have to like skip? Yeah, no skips is like: is it bearable? Yeah, like, like will I? Pull my eyes out. Like can you play it from top to bottom, basically, and not mm. thinking that you have to skip songs it, it, it fits into that so it, yeah. in that sense it is a no skip okay so it's a no skips mm -hmm. is, it a, is it a vinyl cup though uh borderline okay borderline for me because i think i might cop i would cop all three of his last projects on vinyl yeah this would be the, the is fm on vinyl i haven't seen it yeah i mean not seen it i would get fm on, if it was on vinyl it's really I, short though yeah, yeah yeah but i think the the like self-titled ramona park um and dark times mm -hmm. The, the, having these three on vinyl, I think, is worth something. Because I'm assuming he'll continue on this run, but there are no guarantees in this life. Yeah. And the this collection of these three is pretty important. Yeah, I think it's an unofficial trilogy. Again, he has not, mm -hmm. from what I've seen, read, or any anything, he has not said it's a trilogy. But thematically, mm -hmm. it is a trilogy. So if you're really into Vince Staples, um, I would say it is a vinyl cop. Uh, for me personally, I think it's borderline. Borderline. I would mm. say borderline no, which is fine. Um, you know, I'm trying to think. I don't oh, actually I do have the weekend's trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what trilogies do you have? Yeah, I'm trying to think of the trilogies that I that I maybe I don't have, or maybe I just have one album. Like there's some books where mm. I only have like two of the books because like the other ones suck. Yeah. Like I'm trying to think of I don't I, know. I guess, like, the Hitchhiker, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, because there's more books in that series. I only have the first one. Right? I feel like uh, books, it, it is almost a little different, because it's like, you might reread a book in a series, but you're not going to reread the ones that are trash. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> when you already know what happens. Yeah. But, like, I think this this is a trilogy worth getting, to be honest. I, I do feel like this is going to age really well. Mm-hmm. Um, similar to someone like Mac Miller, who when you listen to some of his music, it's like this. This is quality. Yeah. So, it's a borderline for both of us. May, hopefully, in yeah. the next few months, this can grow on us, and maybe we'll end up. Getting okay. It. Now, the mm. moment we've all been waiting for, because yes. I, I have two things. This, this mm. is going to be a second moment. Okay. That I just thought of. Right a now. second moment we're all waiting yeah, for. Yeah. Okay. That I that I just thought of. Um. So this album, mm -hmm. Vince Staples, Dark Times. Adriel, what is your score? For me, this is a seven. Okay. I think this is album is is good. I think this is an album that if you're not into Vince Staples, like this is a time to wake up. There's a, some quality on here. It's my least favorite of the trilogy. Yeah. I would say, but I think that trilogy, we we know what that's about. So a seven is not. Seven that. is good. Seven is good in our books. We have, we we give out threes. This this, this, <laughs> this this is our first like seven. At least my first seven in like a few weeks. So yeah. it's like this is yeah, this, this is a brush of fresh air for me. I feel like again, I'm comparing him to himself. And so he loses some points for that in a sense. Mm -hmm. But comparing him to hip hop as a whole and the climate of hip hop, like for example, sexy red dropped the same day. Yeah. 
you know, there's a <laughs> there's a big difference in those two. So this is a seven for me. Respectfully. Quality music, quality raps, and quality content. Yeah, I I would say for me this is a 7.5, right? Dark Times by Vince Staples. It's mm -hmm. a 7.5. I think that aesthetic is still good. I think that what he raps about is unique, mm -hmm. right? The way that he's rapping about gangster life is unique, right? He thinks about it in an introspective way, remorseful way, like a sad way. Yeah. Whereas people who rap about gangster life, there is some sadness, but it's like one or two songs in the midst of the carnage and the animosity yeah. and the violence, right? And I think that the production style, still muted, still low-key. Um, there are times where it's like a little bit too low-key, like Justin that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. I think that the, I think the interludes, while good, Getting a little played out. Just a little bit. Just a smidge. Okay. Just a smidge. Um, but ultimately, I think it's really good. I think his rapping is probably not as good as the previous ones. But I think he's not like... Vince Staples not like a super intricate rapper. No. But he's also not like destitute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> he's yes. better than... He's he's rapping better than 6 9 <laughs> What a bar. <laughs> I would say he's a, a... He's like a B. B or maybe even... Yeah, he's like a B rapper mm -hmm. in terms of skill. Um, so I think that's good too. So after this, so now that we've done the score for okay. the indiv individual, for the unofficial trilogy. Oh, score the whole trilogy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Your unofficial trilogy score. I think that the trilogy itself is an eight and a half. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's just such a strong trilogy, which every single project being strong. Like this trilogy might be a no skips trilogy. Yeah. Like, facts. So I, I think eight and a half feels fair. I think... The artistic direction took a, a, a turn that I liked a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think this, to me, is what I, I don't say expect, this is what I'm impressed with, with a B rapper. Because I think there's a lot of rappers who are street rappers or underground rappers who are around this level. Mm -hmm. And they just find a way to make it sound worse than it needs to. <laughs> because Vince Staples has almost convinced people he's in the lyrical, you know, spiritual group. Yeah. But I don't think he is. But I think when you don't overdo it as a rapper... And you stay in your pocket, you know your strengths, you can create a great unofficial trilogy like we have here. Mm -hmm. And there's a ton of great music. So this is to me an example of what a lot of other rappers I think are capable of, um, but just kind of get in their own way. So this trilogy, unofficial yeah. trilogy, eight and a half for me. Yeah, I would say it's an eight and a half as well. I was just looking at the album where it's right in front of me. Mm. It goes from his face in black and white to yeah. the two people, just yeah. like torn pictures, to just black. Yeah. So there is a, again, I just want to say that it's unofficial, like there's an unofficial continuum. It seems like there's something there. Yeah. And uh, it even goes to, to the album art. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's literally, I just, I just noticed that just looking at the album art, right? From his face, his full face with like black and white holes in it. Mm -hmm. Then it's the two people, but it's all black background. Now it's just all black background and you can barely even see the fucking text. So I think that aesthetically, Fantastic, you know, even down to the album art. Yep. I think that I agree with what you said. It's, it's probably a no-skip trilogy, which is Insane. very hard to do. That's kind of wild. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of wild. Because I, the previous two, I did, mm -hmm. we did call them no-skips. Yeah. Um, so that's insane. Um, I think that his ability to really encapsulate the sadness, regret, remorse, mm -hmm. the, the downsides of gangster life, but not trying to make it as sad as like Rod Wave or yeah. or Lil Dirk or something like that. And to do it only rapping is actually really, again, something hard to do. Like he, he's doing something that is really uncommon. Mm -hmm. But because I think because um, the production style is kind of muted, it kind of um, it it kind of makes what is stellar that is happening mm -hmm. muted along with it but if you zoom out and like talk through it you're like this is actually doing he's doing impeccable stuff um even like again one of his best songs ever mm -hmm. is on this trilogy yes he's he's a few so yeah so i think and there's some part again there's some party tracks in there some little dancey songs in there yeah storytelling in there lots of good shit man like and most and people not, can aspire to something like this, for real. And it's not long. That's what I think yeah, what, what makes it really cool is like, you know, the self-title was like 22 minutes. Yeah. 
in total, I think this is about 90 minutes between the three of these. Yeah, because even this album, uh, Dark 35 Times, minutes? Yeah, 35 minutes, 33 minutes. They're all yeah. short. So I, I think that this trilogy, un, unofficial trilogy, mm-hmm. one of the things in hip-hop that is, I think, going, getting slept on, I feel like this run of these three projects, I said it before, four albums that are, like, quality is what it takes to make someone a legend in mm-hmm. this game. That's, that's what the rules have been. To have three in a row? <laughs> yeah. He's he's basically there, and and FM and Big Fish Theory were still solid. Yeah, FM, I love FM. Man. So it's like he is on a place now where, again, to me, I say if you're a rapper and you have four quality projects, you can tour forever. Mm-hmm. Like four quality projects is enough music where it's like you got 15 songs to do live, you know, for the rest of your career. I think he's reached that point. Yeah. The next step I want to see from him is doing his own headlining show, whenever that happens. Um, yeah, I think his, I'm excited for this. I think his shows would be better in an intimate setting. Yeah, I agree. I think that trying to do huge like arenas or like shit like that, like mm. I just don't think it works with his music. Like mm. his style of music just doesn't work that way. I think if he made it smaller, more intimate, um, I think it would really pop. And I think building it from that small intimacy mm. and then like gradually making it larger, um, but not so large that he has to be one dude on a stage, like, don't do the Drake thing where it's just you and yes, like there's yes, nothing yes, else. Yes, kind of you know you you want it kind of want it to be crowded in a little bit in a, in a yeah. Way. I I think but, when I I saw uh, Dave at the Velvet Underground in 2018, mm-hmm. that is the kind of thing I see for Vince, and I I think a show needs to be his energy as well. I feel like true. I I seen a couple times. One I remember specifically is it was ASAP Rocky, Tyler the Creator were the two headliners. And Vince and Danny Brown opened. Mm-hmm. And Vince went on before Danny Brown and two different energies. Facts. <laughs> two, two, different, <laughs> two different energies. Yeah. And uh, people were there for Vince. Like, people, since I still had some people singing the words to the songs in the front row. But I think that a Vince show that's just his energy and his mm-hmm. type of vibe, very different because it went from Vince again to Danny Brown to ASAP Rocky yeah. to Tyler the Creator. And this is like Tamale Tyler the Creator. Yeah. So he needs, he needs his own show. Yeah, he needs his own show. He needs like a like his. I'm trying to think of like his section, like his group mm-hmm. is like a Rod Wave type of section, bro. He's in a lower. It's just a, not a lower key. Like mm-hmm. the the people that show up for Vince Staples aren't the same as like they're similar in a way to mm-hmm. Tyler the Creator, but it's just like a more muted. Like he has to understand that his music is more muted. It's almost closer to an R&B crowd. And I think, he need, I think again, it's more for people who are there for him. I yeah. think even times I've seen him, like, I'm there for ASAP Rocky, and I just happen to know Vince Staples and Vince mm-hmm. Staples' songs. I remember I brought my brother's title to the creator. He didn't know who Vince Staples was. So <laughs> yeah. it's like there, there are some Vince Staples super fans out there, and they need to all converge yeah, he needs for to, the shows. He needs to start thinking about it in the same way of, like, um, as your guy Brent Fayez, like really yeah. hyper localize the things that he's doing. Yeah. So, anyways, thank you everybody for listening to the Album Mode podcast, watching the Album Mode podcast. Yeah. Make sure you follow us everywhere: Instagram at Album Mode Pod, Twitter at Album Mode Pod, YouTube at Album Mode, TikTok at Album Mode Pod. Okay. And make sure you guys are pressing the like button, subscribing, commenting. Again, I'm always here in the comments, guys. I mm-hmm. promise you, I am replying in the comments. Sometimes I reply as Album Mode. Sometimes I'm replying from a from a mysterious account, so so it does it does it looks unaffiliated. Mysterious account. Yeah, hilarious. I'm I'm in here. I'm in here just like um even uh, Megan the Sound. Like she's part of like all of her. She's actually in all of the groups and like mm. group chats and stuff like that. But she's just like chilling. She doesn't really say anything. Yeah, I I read. I don't reply. Right. I'm replying. Yeah. I'm replying, and I also s- indicate that I'm replying because I put like the little D next to it. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm in there. So thank everybody for tuning in. Adriel, Mm -hmm. make sure you know yourself and know your worth. Later days.